Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about constraints and requirements in PIP, which is a Python package manager. I'm gonna show you how both those work as well as two use cases that I have used constraints for. Anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so for this today, we are going to set up a virtual environment and activate that. And we're gonna be using PIP and the version of PIP that we're using today is 21.3.1. Uh, which I believe is the current version right now, in case any of this behavior changes in the future. <laughs> um, and we're gonna set up both a requirements file and a constraints file. Uh, now a requirements file basically specifies pip what it should install. So if we add a requirements.txt, you can specify all sorts of stuff in here, like uh, the index URL to you know, limit it to a particular package index, you can have other flags for pip, like only binary all, or like all sorts of different flags. Uh, and you can also have packages and their versions. You can have editable installs. You can have all sorts of stuff. Uh, but for today, we're just gonna be talking about packages. And so let's say we're gonna be installing a package that I wrote called AST Pretty. And let me grab the version of that, pypi.org slash p AST Pretty. Uh, and looks like the latest version is 2.1.0. So I'm gonna use equals equals 2.1.0. And if I do pip install dash r requirements.txt, uh, this will recursively find all the requirements. We haven't actually shown anything new here. Uh, this is just going to install what we've requested it to install there. Uh, let's actually uninstall that because we're going to be demoing, <laughs> going back and forth with installations later. Uh, now, I also want to tell you about a constraints file. And a constraints file uh, tells pip what versions to install if that package happens to get installed. So if we make a constraints.txt. Let's say that we wanted to force a particular version of, I don't know, what's another library? PyAML? PyAML. Uh, uh, let's say for whatever reason we wanted to force, I don't know, 5.4.1. We would say PyAML equals 5.4.1. Uh, now I previously talked about all, you know, requirements.txt can have all sorts of different syntaxes for pip flags and that sort of stuff. Uh, constraints.txt does not support that. It only supports package names, operators, and versions. And it doesn't even support extras. So if you had like some foo extra, that is not supported in a constraints.txt. It is only intended to constrain the versions of packages. Uh, and the way you use it on the command line is the same as we had before with dash r, but instead we're gonna use dash c constraints.txt. And you'll notice when I run this, we get exactly the same output as before. We've installed ASD Pretty, and it has not installed PyAML. And that is because constraints only uh, constrain the versions of packages. They don't cause them to get installed. Uh, but if we were to change our requirements.txt, let's say that we installed some uh, library which depended on PyAML. Let's see what is the most recent version of pre-commit. Uh, 2.15. Uh, now I happen to know that pre-commit depends on PyAML, so it should pull it in. And by default, pip would install the latest version of PyAML. I guess just to show you that first, we're gonna do pip install PyAML. Uh, and you'll see that by default, it's gonna pull in 6.0, which is the latest version. Uninstall PyAML, yes. And now if we install constraints, uh, you'll see that we installed a lot of output, but we got 5.4.1 instead of 6.0. And that is because our constraints file uh, forced it to be at that particular version. Um, so even though pregament only depends on 5.1, the constraints caused it to get forced to 5.4.1. Cool, so that's, that's what constraints is. It doesn't force it to get installed, but it does limit it to a particular version. Uh, now I've seen two main uses of constraints.txt. Uh, the first is for use at companies, uh, which may want to force a particular version, maybe for like security requirements or something like that. And so they may use constraints.txt to say, uh, you know, we, we always want to install PyAML greater than or equal to six uh, because we don't want any of the previous versions, which I don't know, may have vulnerabilities or something like that. Uh, and so what they'll do is they'll put this file at like Etsy, um, you know, my company slash constraints.txt and they'll encode those global versions that they want to force in this constraints file. And then they'll also set a pip.conf, uh, which forces that constraints file to get included. That way, any installation must use those particular uh, versions, and you, know, you can't bypass that. It may also be useful to, you know, if you've forked a library, say you have uh, 6.0 plus my company, 
one or something like that, maybe your, your first version of your fork of that library. And you want to force everyone to install the forked version and not the upstream version. So you may use constraints.txt to also do that as well. Now, the other use case that I've seen this for is for testing minimum versions of libraries in, uh, in open source. So let's actually clone one of my libraries that has a dependency uh, to reassert, which is a regex assertion library that I wrote. <laughs> I wrote on vacation. Um, and for the sake of discussion, I think this just has an open dependency right now. Yeah. So let's just say that we had pinned this to some minimum version. Let's find uh, s slash regex. What was the first version that had a wheel? That seems like a reasonable lower bound for a mini Linux wheel. Maybe not that version because it's only 3.6. This one has a 3.8 wheel. So let's say that we set the minimum version to 2019.12.17, which was that version here. Now, this minimum bound might not actually be tested. And so if we were to run our tests here, uh, it'll actually install the latest version because that's, you know, pip defaults to the latest version. And you'll see when we run this here, we got kind of hard to see, uh, but we got 2021.11.10, which I believe is the absolute latest version way down here. Yeah, so this is this is the version that got installed, and that's not super helpful for us because we want we want to make sure that this library continues to work in older versions. And so what we might do is we might leverage talks to do this by setting up a separate test env uh, with a separate set of constraints, and uh, <laughs> the docs for talks actually. Uh, <laughs> tell you how to do this but then it doesn't work in the current version and it's a known bug that we will fix at some point um yeah like it says you can just specify it in depths and this works as long as the dependency is not part of your setup uh dot pi <laughs> but since this is part of our setup dot pi or setup dot cfg or pi project dot tom or however you're specifying your dependencies we actually have to uh modify install command instead and python-m pip install, and we're going to set our constraints file here. So we're going to do dash c min versions. And uh, we're also going to have, actually it's probably better to put the options first. That way our constraints is always last. And I think this is the install command syntax, install command ops packages. Cool. Uh, and so we can actually uh, override the pip install command to force our uh, constraints here. And then if we were to set up our min versions.txt, and let's say we did regex equals 20, what's it? 2019.12.17, I think. Uh, 2019.12.17, yes. And so now if we were to run the min environment, instead of getting this new version 2021.11.10, we can test against the minimum version by forcing a constraint. And you'll see here that we yeah, we have forced this particular version. Now, of course, you could also do this by <laughs> by just setting that version here. Uh, if we just did depths and you know regex equals 20, 2019.12.17 instead of that, like you could you could force it in this way as well. Uh, I think that works. Um, but yeah, constraints just sometimes seems like a, a cleaner way to do that. Oh, we forgot to inherit the other depths. I guess that's where it's a little bit better because you would have to do this to include the depths from above. But this this approach also works. I don't know, pick, pick whichever one you're happy with. <laughs> I, I actually have not used this constraints approach before, so um, I tend to just do this instead because it's... You know, it's a little bit simpler, but constraints is kind of designed for this. Anyway, that's the difference between constraints and requirements. Hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.